Change that Twitter password, an Android phone hack that cannot be fixed in software, and millions of routers can be hacked. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for May 8, 2018. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. So if you want access to exclusives, including the brand new Discord server, check out the Patreon link in the show notes below. And now, on to the news. On Thursday, Twitter announced that they found a bug that was storing plain text passwords in an internal log. What? 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 Okay. So passwords are encrypted with Bcrypt on Twitter, which is great, but for some strange reason, the passwords, when entered, were first being stored in plain text via this log, then encrypted with Bcrypt algorithms. Twitter discovered the bug, removed the passwords, and are updating their protocols. Now, while Twitter says that there is no indication of a breach or misuse by anyone, this does not explain how it happened. According to sources with ZDNet, the log was found in a weird place, and chances were low that anyone would notice it, and that it was also only related to their internal systems. The passwords were stored for several months in the state. According to sources with ZDNet, the log was found in a weird place and chances were low that anyone would actually notice it, and that it was also only related to their internal systems. The passwords were stored for several months in the state. According to Twitter's fourth quarter earnings, they have 330 million users, and the blog post did not detail how many were affected. So let's just discuss this for a second, okay? Now, while the company is taking positive steps by notifying users and immediately responding to the problem, why was the problem there in the first place? What was this bug? And how do we know that it was actually a bug and not a malicious actor who hid the log on their servers to be accessed at a later time? Many of the technical aspects of this bug were not available via Twitter's notification, and this kept me quite skeptical about the whole issue. Nevertheless, it, if it was actually simply a bug, then they are doing what they need to do as a company. But I don't know if we'll ever actually know what is the case behind it. They do recommend changing your password on Twitter, which you can do so by going to the settings and privacy tab and then choosing password and then updating it, as well as any other sites where you may have reused your password. And while you're at it, consider using a password manager and ensuring that each password is different and it follows the National Institute of Standards and Technologies password ideals for using passphrases instead of just a simple leet speak word because phrases have stronger entropy. I also recommend turning on two-factor authentication on Twitter because it does offer up much better security than just a password. Android phones can be compromised! Again! In a paper posted by four researchers at a University of Amsterdam VUSEC research group, they explained that a new technique, which they dubbed Glitch, can use the WebGL JavaScript graphics library to remotely compromise an Android phone by bypassing browser defenses via the GPU, thereby pwning or owning the phone in under two minutes. This uses a row hammer attack, which takes advantage of a side effect in dynamic random access memory, in which memory cells leak charges and they could thereby leak data by flipping bits in physical memory to RAM. The data is obviously stored in ones and zeros like any other computer, but the bits when leaked could accidentally turn from ones to zeros or vice versa. An attacker could hammer at those bits enough that a very specific one gets flipped, which would then give them access to more of that device. Android phones have protections in place that store a small bit of memory for frequently accessed data, which keeps the phone running efficiently. And by storing a bit of data to be used, the leaking issue is minimal, thereby defending against row hammer attacks. Now, usually row hammer defenses protect the CPU, not the GPU. So by focusing down on that GPU, they were able to bypass all of those protections. The crazy thing is, these kind of problems were first reported back in 2014, which is four years ago, when the terminology row hammer first surfaced. But this is the first time that researchers have figured out a way to use the 
vulnerability against Android phones remotely. In this new case, the technique could work if a user simply visited a malicious website on their browser, which would run shady code and then own the device. And since the flaw relates to the core structure of CPUs, or in this case, GPUs, it is nearly impossible to fix with a software patch. Yes, it is scary, it does sound scary, but not without its faults. So far, it has only been found to affect older Snapdragon 800 and 801 Qualcomm chipsets, which have a CPU and a GPU integrated onto the chip, and it only targets the Firefox browser. Glitch uses browser restrictions, so it cannot root the phone or access data on other apps outside of the browser, but still, it could steal your passwords, your browsing history, or your credit card information stored within that browser. With more time and study, it is within reason that Glitch could be updated to do much more. The researchers found that it does work on Nexus 5, HTC One M8, and LG G2 phones. But they also believe that given some more time, they would be able to rewrite the exploit to work on newer phones too. Google responded to Wired saying that the exploit would not work on newer phones, but the researchers say that they can reproduce bit flips on Pixel phones so it may be plausible. The newest version of Chrome as of March 13th is not vulnerable, and Mozilla Firefox is due to release an update this week. With that said, even though browser and software fixes help keep this vulnerability quiet, the underlying problem, how that memory is accessed, is a part of the core infrastructure of a device, and as such, it will not be fixed until hardware manufacturers are able to develop new chipsets that are not vulnerable to Rohammer attacks. Now, while this attack is more practical than most, it has never been seen in the wild. With that said, users should be careful of what websites they browse to and make sure that your browser is up to date. We're gonna start off this segment by defining what the heck GPON is. So GPON stands for a gigabit capable passive optic network, which allows for end-to-end -end communication over fiber optic cables using multi-point architecture. VPN mentor researchers conducted an assessment of vulnerabilities on a large number of GPON on routers made by South Korean-based Dasan networks. GPON routers are very common, and at this time, they are used in more than one million homes. The majority of these GPONs are being used and connected to the internet in Mexico, Kazakhstan, and Vietnam. Unfortunately, the tests indicate that there are two huge security flaws in GPONs. So the first flaw allows for an attacker to bypass all authentication of devices. And the second flaw allows for command injection to the device and the entire network. So the flaw in the device lies within the authentication mechanism. This is a flaw that allows the attacker to bypass all authentication on the device because the HTTP servers check through specific paths whenever they authenticate. All that the attacker needs to do in order to bypass the authentication is to simply append the string, which is question mark images slash, to the command line and then they are simply in. This allows for large scale snooping and injection of malware, which could mean that your network is hacked, whether it is in use or not. The attacker can even route criminal activity through the breach network. According to Security Week's article about the CVEs, the VPN mentor tried to reach out to the developers of the company before making the vulnerability public, but they did not receive a response. Dasan Networks has previously been targeted by malware back in January of 2018, so pretty recent, when they experienced a botnet attack and they have not heeded warnings about the vulnerabilities on their devices. At this time, the current problems have not been patched. So in order to protect yourself from this vulnerability, you can check if your router uses the GPON network, or you can communicate with your ISP to see how they can fix the bug. Patrons, make sure to share your favorite stories in the community tab or on Discord. Every Friday, I will pick three or more top stories for a voting poll that patrons can vote on to be included in next week's show. Patrons also get access to an audio RSS feed, first looks at show topics, polls, discussions just for patrons, behind the scene photos, and now that Discord server just for patrons at $2 per month and up. Join now to get access to all of these and to help support the show. The next goal covers the cost of our new equipment upgrades like you see here, like the camera that I'm currently recording on, and also opens up a live video Q&A just for patrons each and every month. And I also wanna say a huge thanks to our Hush Puppy perk level patrons for sending in their adorable fur baby photos. I love them. Keep them coming. They're adorable. Hit the subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. And with that, I am Shanna Morse, and I will see you on the internets.